Assalamu alaikum. So this is the third and final part of the uh, lipids lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we'll be talking about cyclic um, lipids, specifically steroids, and then we'll talk about um, uh, the membrane, uh, the membrane structure in cells, um, and different types of membrane proteins. Okay, the type of lipids that we will be talking about are steroids. Now, steroids are the cyclic, uh, cyclic lipids. So, uh, they are composed of a steroid nucleus. Okay, and this steroid nucleus is made of four ring structures um, and a total of 17 carbons. Okay, so uh, this nucleus, by the way, is made of a, it's derived from a molecule known as isoprene, five carbon molecule. So, you have condensation of different isoprene molecules forming the steroid nucleus. The most common steroid is our beloved uh, notorious molecule known as cholesterol. So cholesterol is actually a 30, uh, sorry, a 27 carbon molecule. It's made from a 30 carbon molecule, then three carbons are removed. So it's 27 carbons. Okay. Now this cholesterol is an amphipathic molecule. Okay, remember, amphipathic means dual, both natures, hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So it's quite a hydrophobic molecule, but it has this hydroxyl group, making it an amphipathic molecule, because as I said, you can draw a line right here, and you can say, this is hydrophilic, this whole thing is hydrophobic. Okay, first of all, we can make a lot of products. We, so we have many steroid molecules, uh, most commonly known, the sex hormones, androgens, estrogens, progestins. So note all of these molecules having the steroid nucleus and they have methyl groups and they have hydroxyl groups and whatever, okay? So notice the little differences between these molecules. Like if you look at progesterone and, and testosterone, really uh, minor differences uh, between them in, in structure as well as estradiol, same thing, okay? So uh, sex hormones. now. Also vitamins such as vitamin D, uh, vitamins uh, A, D, uh, E, and K are all made of isoprenoids as well. So, uh, but vitamin D is the one that is made from cholesterol only. So that's the structure of vitamin D. You don't have to know, of course, the, the structure, so don't worry about it. Now, among the uh, derivatives, important uh, derivatives of cholesterol is bile acids. Now, bile acids are synthesized, secreted from the gallbladder, marara, and uh, its main function really is to facilitate uh, absorption of fat. Okay, so this is a structure of uh, bile acids, and bile acids are amphipathic molecules. Now, you might look at bile acids and say, wait, I can see a hydro Philic group right here. I can see another one right there, and there's a third one in here. So, how can you call it an amphipathic molecule? Where can you draw the line? And the thing with white acids is that you have to look at the molecule in a three dimensional form. So, you can see all of the hydrophilic molecules are localized below the ring structures. And here you have all of the hydrophobic molecules. So, you can draw the line right here and you say, aha, now I can see an amphipathic molecule. So, how, what, what does, uh, what, what do bile acids do? They are emulsifying molecules. Remember emulsification when we talk about phospholipids? Emulsification means what they do is that they dissolve fat. So what they do is that they take a fatty lipid droplet. So if you eat liye in mansaf, and there is this fatty droplet. So what, what these do, what bile acids do is that they surround uh, the uh, uh, lipid droplets, uh, enabling the hydrophilic environment in the intestine to actually break up these the, these uh, drops of uh, of fat into smaller molecules that can then be uh, a, a absorbed by intestinal cells. So here 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 we have a bile salt or bile acid um, looking like this. Okay. 
So here you have the hydrophilic molecules and here you have the hydrophobic uh, part that is exposed to the fatty droplet. Okay, now, now something else about cholesterol is that um, when it is carried uh, in, in the body, it can be carried, and when it is stored in the body, it can be stored as a cholesterol ester, meaning that you have attachment of a fatty acid to the hydroxyl group, making the molecule really, really hydrophobic. Okay? So look at this molecule. And the question is, can you name it? Okay, so here you have a cholesterol molecule, and right here you have a fatty acid. Now, how many carbons can you see in here? That's one. Okay, uh, that is, sorry, 16. 16, and here you have one. By the way, here's one. That's one. 16, so that's 17. And here you have another one. That's 18. So this is uh, stearic acid. So this is known as cholesterol uh, mirror state. Uh, sorry, uh, cholesterol uh, stearate. Okay, and here you have another one. Okay, How can you name this molecule? So that's your homework. It's easy, huh? So the thing about uh, cholesterol and other lipids, triglycerides, uh, triacyl uh, glycerols, is that when we eat them, they are absorbed by intestinal cells and then they get into the blood uh, system and they travel. And they can be stored in the liver as well as adipose tissues okay and they can leave adipose tissues into the blood and from blood to peripheral tissues and from liver to peripheral tissues as well but these uh, lipids are hydrophobic and they cannot be dissolved in blood so how are they carried they are, ca they are carried by molecules known as lipoproteins lipoproteins and that's how a that's how a lipoprotein looks like so it looks like what do you remember this structure right here it is a micelle so you have the hydrophilic uh, heads exposed to the outside and to the inside you have the fatty acid chains and right in the middle you have the triacylglycerols and cholesterol esters right here um, stored in the middle Okay, so there are different types of lipoproteins as you can see in here, and these are known as chylomicrons, very low density lipoproteins, intermediate density lipoproteins, you have low density lipoproteins, and you have high density lipoproteins. And they have different composition, variable composition of both lipids and proteins. So HDL contains a lot of or 50 50 uh, in terms of uh, the protein to lipid ratio ratio now you look at uh, low density lipoprotein and you can see that the ratio is 20 to 80 so you have a lot more uh, lipids versus proteins same thing with uh, so you have uh, even less proteins in intermediate density lipoproteins compared to LDL and HDL and so on and if you look at chylomicrons they only contain 1% proteins and 99% uh, lipids so the thing is so the more proteins you have the higher the density so the more protein you have the higher the density now each one of them by the way and, and note the sizes as well so chylomicrons are huge compared to uh, high density lipoproteins now each one of them has a certain function so chylomicrons for example carry lipids from the intestines to liver okay so they carry dietary lipids high density lipoproteins on the other hand carry uh, uh, lipids from peripheral tissues back to liver so it's known as a good cholesterol it carries a lot of cholesterol by the way compared to other types of lipids uh, chylomicrons carry a lot of triacylglycerols okay so uh, high density lipoprotein is known as a good cholesterol why because it removes cholesterol from the body back to liver and liver would eliminate cholesterol excess cholesterol 
low density lipoprotein carries a lot of cholesterol as well but and and some trias triacyl glycerols but it's known as the bad cholesterol and the reason is that it carries cholesterol for two reasons one it carries cholesterol from liver to peripheral tissues so it doesn't really remove excess uh, cholesterol that's one two it has the tendency to accumulate in blood vessels and precipitate okay so these are the different types of lipids so LDL is really bad because what it does is that it can accumulate in blood vessels um, due to different reasons. You will learn about them uh, in, in different uh, lectures or courses and um, causing atherosclerosis and eventually heart attacks. Now, so let's talk about cell membranes now. Cell membrane, it's uh, thought to, to look like a mosaic. So it's known as a fluid mosaic model. So what is mosaic? So basically it looks like a nice painting from Madaba. So it really looking nice, uh, different parts in different regions. It's, it's more complex than uh, what we have thought. Uh, it's made of a lot of lipids. So 45% of uh, cell membranes uh, is basically a lipid, 45% uh, protein and 10% carbohydrates. Okay. Now, but if you look at the lipid composition of plasma membranes, you would notice that actually it's not symmetrical, meaning that if you look at a lipid bilayer, okay, so you have two layers where you have the phospho heads uh, out, exposed to the outside, outside of the cell and inside of the cell. And right in the middle, you have the fatty acid chains. Okay. So the type of lipids that exist on, in the outer leaflet, okay, so we call this the outer leaflet, uh, the type of lipids is different than the type of lipids that are present in the inner leaflet. So, for example, in the outer leaflet, you would find more phosphatidylcholine, sphingomyelin, and glycolipids. So, you see a lot of sugars, by the way, exposed to the outside of the cell because one function of these lipids is cell recognition. That is, that's, this is how immune cells can recognize cells by, by looking at the sugars that are present on the surface of cells. Now, in the inner leaflet, the types of lipids uh, include uh, phosphatidyl ethanol amine, phosphatidyl serine, and phosphatidyl inositol. And remember, we talked about phosphatidyl inositol being involved in cell signaling. So it is exposed to the inside of cells. So whenever there is something that binds to a receptor on the cell surface, you have um, you have the phosphatidyl inositol sensing the presence of a ligand, a hormone, growth factor, whatever, and it sends a signal to another molecule inside the cell. Now, also what you see in the plasma membrane, you see cholesterol as well. So you have a lot of cholesterol, and the difference here is that cholesterol is equally distributed on both parts of leaflets, the plasma membrane. Now, cholesterol, by the way, is present mainly in animal cells, there is no cholesterol in plant cells or prokaryotic cells. Plant cells have a different type of uh, steroid uh, molecule. Prokaryotic cells have none. Okay. Okay, so fatty acids had uh, have a, a huge effect, by the way, on the plasma membrane and its fluidity. Plasma membranes are supposed to be fluidic, okay, uh, in order to allow for molecules to pass through the plasma membrane, that's one, and two, so that molecules inside the membrane itself can also move freely, especially in, in certain cell types like the uh, retinal cells, that is our visual cells, okay, um, the inner membrane of the mitochondria as well. Uh, it has to be fluidic so that you can have the electron transport chain going on smoothly. 
Now, so the fluidity of membranes is determined or it's governed by or controlled by the type of fatty acids that are attached to the phosphate heads. Okay. So if you have uh, fully saturated fatty acids, then the membrane would be quite rigid. Remember when we talked about cis double bonds having kinks, tajat? So basically you have spaces created between the different fatty acids making the membrane fluidic. So the more saturated the membrane is, the more rigid it is. And the opposite is true. The more, the more unsaturated fatty acids uh, uh, there are, the more fluidic the membrane is. So um, membrane fluidity is also controlled by the temperature. So the more, the higher the temperature, the more, the less ordered the membrane becomes, the less packed it becomes, and vice versa. Opposite is true. That is, the lower the temperature, the more ordered the membrane becomes. Okay. So you need in hot temperatures for the membrane to be uh, more saturated. You need the fatty acids to be more saturated in order to have a more packed. And in regions where the temperature is low, you want the membrane to be more unsaturated, containing more unsaturated fatty acids in order to prevent membrane packing. Okay, this is why, by the way, subhanAllah, this is why in regions like the Eskimo, for example, where it's really, really cold, their main food is fish and fish contains a lot of omega-3 fatty acids so a person would digest a lot of omega-3 and it would get into the structure of membranes okay so you have a lot of unsaturated fatty acids in membranes making the membrane less rigid at low temperature okay and there is sort of like what, what is known as the melting temperature. There is a transition temperature where it runs really fast between being rigid or solid-like versus fluid-like. Remember this point right here, the melting temperature, for example, or the uh, P50 value, that is the, the value of 50%. Just remember that for, for um, when we talk about hemoglobin. Okay, so how about the effect of cholesterol? Well, cholesterol, that's how it lies in the plasma membrane. Remember when we said that it's amphipathic having a hydroxyl group and then you have the, the four rings, the hydrophobic rings right here? Well, that's, that's how it lies inside the membrane where you have the rings uh, interacting uh, or exposed to, to the uh, fatty acid chains. And you have the hydroxyl group exposed to the phospholipid groups. So that's how it looks like. Now the thing is, what cholesterol does is that it makes the membrane more rigid. Especially, uh, especially at high temperatures. Okay. So what it does is that it balances, it, it uh, strengthens the membrane at high temperature, avoiding the uh, the membrane from collapsing. Now, something else about cholesterol that is not mentioned in the textbook, and I and I find it interesting, is that what it does also is that it makes the membrane more fluidic at low temperature by creating spaces between the fatty acid chains. So it has dual effects on the plasma membrane. Overall, it decreases the mobility of hydrocarbon tails of phospholipids, and it, inf it, inf it interferes with close packing of fatty acids in the crystal state at low temperature, that is. So let's talk about membrane proteins. Okay, so membrane proteins exist in different forms and types and structures. So you have uh, membranes, membrane proteins being integral, Okay, meaning that they insert themselves inside the plasma membrane. 
they can have parts exposed to the outside or to the inside they have parts only exposed to the inside they can be uh, uh, attached to the plasma membrane via a fatty acid chain um, and they can have different structures inside the plasma membrane or they can be peripheral proteins meaning that they interact with other proteins that are integral membrane proteins so integral membrane proteins integrate themselves inside the plasma membrane note the structure here of proteins on the outside how they get they are glycosylated so these chains are sugar chains right here so you, you can see the the extracellular part of plasma proteins being glycosylated but not nothing inside uh, the uh, cell so there are different types of membrane proteins you have peripheral tissues these are not really associated with the plasma uh, protein directly. They can, uh, they can uh, associate with uh, membrane proteins or they can associate loosely uh, with the phospholipid head, with the heads of phospholipids, with the phosphate head of, of these lipids. Okay? And they associate non-covalently. Now, integral membrane proteins, they are anchored, they insert themselves, the protein part inserts itself uh, into the membrane. And we have lipid anchored, meaning that you can have attachment of a lipid uh, chain to the proteins and the lipid chain uh, associates itself, integrates itself into the plasma membrane. So there are different types. So we have peripheral me membrane proteins. They are associated uh, uh, loosely with the plasma membrane. They do not penetrate the hydrophobic core of the plasma membrane. They can be associated with integral membrane proteins and they associate non-covalently. So by treating cells with mild detergent, okay, we can release these proteins from the plasma membrane. Okay, so you will learn about the different types of proteins and their characteristics later on with Dr. Diana, inshallah. Now, the integral membrane proteins, there are different types. Uh, you have uh, proteins that integrate just once. They have one integral membrane uh, domain uh, inserting itself into the plasma membrane, or they can have multiple uh, uh domains that uh, that are integral okay that are membrane integral they have a certain uh, structure that you will learn about that is known it's known as an alpha helix that what exists in human cells and uh, mammalian cells now in bacteria they can have something called a beta sheet and again you will learn about these different structures later on so some can form channels as well so they can go in and out, in and out, uh, inside the plasma membrane, forming a channel that looks like this. So it goes, it's like, it's like when you are sewing a button uh, in, in your shirt, for example. Okay, so it, uh, it's, it looks something like this. And, inside, and right in the middle, you have the opening that whereby ions or other molecules can pass through. Okay. Uh, and, and if you look at this figure right here, some, some proteins have an extracellular uh, part exposed, out, an extracellular cellu part and an intracellular part, or they can have a part exposed only to, the, to one side or the other, um, or you have proteins totally embedded in the plasma membrane as well. So what are their uh, function? Different, quite different functions and different structures as well. So they can be transport proteins, since membranes are not uh, permeable to molecules like ions and, and um, uh, hydro, large hydrophilic molecules and other proteins as well. They can be involved in uh, signaling, okay? And they can also be enzymes, um, such as enzyme-linked receptors. And you, will, you already learned about that in, in cell biology.